Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. In this video, let's understand how we can build a data frame question and answer agent using Langchain and OpenAI's GPT model. So first we will pass a CSV or an Excel file to this code and this code will read that CSV file and then it will pass on this to the agent where a data frame agent will pass this to the LLM and it will help us to get answers for our question on top of this data frame. So this will be the agenda for today's video and let's get started. The first step is installing all the required libraries. So here we have Langchain, Langchain Experimental and Langchain OpenAI. So these are the three libraries that we need. So you can uh, make sure that you have the latest version of all these libraries. So once we have installed this, so I've already installed these libraries. So I'm commenting out this line, but you can install these libraries if you have not installed this already. The first step here would be to import all the required dependencies. So first uh, I'll import OS. So we need this in order to access the extensions of the files and the dataset files that we'll be working on. So I'll input OS and then from langchain.agents import agent type. So this is the second thing. I'll also explain you what is the purpose of all these functions once I'm done. The next thing is from langchain underscore experimental dot agents import create pandas data frame agent and then from langchain underscore open ai import chat open ai and finally we can import pandas in order to create these data frames okay so these are the things that we need so let's understand this so first we are importing this OS for some file operations and basically to find the extensions of the CSV or the excel file and then we have this langchain agents agent type so within this agent type we later say that i'm going to use open ai agent because that's the llm that we are using so for that we have this langchain dot agents and from there we are importing this agent type and then langchain experimental dot agents create pandas data frame agent so this is used to create a data frame agent that will help us to answer our questions based on the data that's present in the data frame and then we have this langchain open ai import chat open ai which is uh, you know used to load the llm so you can either use gpt 3.5 turbo or like let's say gpt4 or basically any open ai models and then we have this pandas spd so these are the libraries that we need so import all these things uh, so how this would work is so it's not much easy in order to you know send the uh, csv or excel file to the llm or chat gpt and get a response so if the file is too long so we won't be able to do that so alternatively what we can do is create a data frame agent that can read this you know data frame and it can like you know when we ask a question on natural language it's going to generate some python codes uh, and execute that python code in the back end and it's going to give us the result that we need so this is how it's going to work and the next thing is we need to write a function that would read uh, the data file so in this case we can maybe consider csv files and excel files but again this is not limited to you can also uh, you know write some codes that can connect to a uh, you know uh, database and, and read the data to a data frame so that's possible too so here i'll say read uh, data and within this we have to give this path file path so i'll say file path and then file name comma extension is equal to os dot path dot split text and here we have to pass this file path okay so we have this file name and extension os dot split text so basically what this will do is read a file uh, file name or a file path and it's going to give you the extension of that okay so that's the purpose of this so if you are passing a csv file it's going to say csv dot csv if it's an excel it's going to say dot xlsx and so on so it's going to return you that uh, uh, file extension so here i'll say if extension is equal to dot csv in that case i can say df is equal to pd dot 
read csv and here it should be file path uh, let's say if the extension is equal to dot xlsx or extension is equal to dot xls so these are uh, excel files right so in this case we are we have to use pd dot read excel so here we would give this file path and then finally we can return a df so this code basically handles two types of files one is your csv files and the other one is excel files because for uh, csvs we have to use read csv and for excel we have to use read excel right so that's why we are creating this function and in order to determine the extension or basically the file type we are using this if condition that will check whether it's dot csv or dot xlsx and this extension we are getting it from os dot path dot split text okay and the other thing that you can also try is uh, add a line of code that can convert all the uppercase letters to lowercase letters uh, you know before this step so that if someone has named the file as dot you know uppercase csv we can convert it back to dot csv in this name and we can use this read csv so that's the other thing and for this case i'm going to use this uh, diabetes dot csv which is like the you know uh, one of the toy data sets that we work with machine learning so i'm going to use this one so let's run this and now you can say df is equal to read data so this read data function will automatically determine the type of the file and it will use the corresponding read csv or read excel in order to load the uh, you know data set file into a pandas data frame which is what we need or basically which is something that we have to pass to the llm agent so here within this i'll say the path so both this notebook and this diabetes.csv is in the same path so i'm going to just say you know diabetes so you can alternatively give the entire path as well so that's up to you so split text is not present so I should remove one T here. Let's run this again. Okay. So now we have loaded this diabetes.csv into this variable called as df and we can say df.aid in order to print uh, the first five rows of the data frame. So here we have this pregnancies, glucose, blood pressure and all those columns and you can also check the shape of this data. So you know if you just want to look at it once. So this is like the first step. So here we have written a function that can uh, determine the type of file and it can read it again as I said if you want you can also uh, write this function such that it reads from a database you just have to give the creden credentials of the db username password server and so on so that we can load into a data frame and other steps will be the same so only this function would probably change if you are working with different types of data okay the next step is we need to get the open ai api key so that we can use the gpt models so for that you can go to google search open ai and here go to this products tab so in this openai.com go to products and go to this api login and here you can get your api keys so you can choose api and use api keys and you can create a new secret key so here i'll just say df agent or something so some of the models require you to give some payment method but probably you can try gpt 3.5 turbo it doesn't require this payment option but you can just try some other models like if you are not able to you know give a payment method so here i've created a api key so i'm going to save that to the environment variables so one way to do this is you can configure the openai library or the other better way is to store it in the environment variables so here I'm going to paste it directly in the code, but it's not recommended. So the better way is to put it in a .env, a environment file, or you can also have a configuration.json where you can store all these EP keys, DB credentials, and so on. So that's like a better approach. But for demonstration, I'll just put it directly in the code. So I'll say os.environ, and I'm going to create a environment variable openai api key so this is what we call as openai uh, the environment variable so when the code runs when we load the llm or the gpt's api it's going to look for the key in this particular uh, environment variable and this name shouldn't change so it should be exactly what i have given here openai api key in uh, uppercase letter so this is equal to paste the openai key that you have you know that you have from openai site so that is all now we can load this llm so i can say llm is equal to chat openai 
So here we are not directly accessing the OpenAI library, but instead we are using this LangChain OpenAI integration. So from this LangChain OpenAI, I'm importing this chat OpenAI. And within this, you have to pass, uh, you know, the model that you are going to use. So the model that we will be using is uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo. Again, you can use a 4 o model or 4 or any model of your choice. And the next thing that I'm going to give is temperature is equal to zero so that I'm getting like similar results every time. So if you have a larger temperature value, it's going to the result is going to slightly change for you. So I don't want that. So I'm having this temperature as zero and this value ranges from zero and one. So I'll run this. So now we are going to create a pandas data frame agent. So I'll create a variable as pandas df agent and this pandas df agent is equal to create pandas data frame agent that we have imported from langchain experimental dot agents so i'll paste it here and within this we have to pass in few parameters so first is llm and the other one is df so we are first passing llms and and, and the df and say verbose is equal to true in order to see the intermediate results uh, codes and so on so for that you can have verbose is equal to true or you can also choose to set it to false that's okay and agent type agent type is equal to the agent type that we have imported from langchain agent so here we have to say it's going to be a uh, open ai functions okay so it, it integrates better with the you know uh, open AI's llm that we have which is gpt 3.5 and then i'm going to add another parameter called as allow dangerous code is equal to true so this we have to understand why we are giving this particular parameter so what basically happens is when we ask a question the llm which is gpt 3.5 turbo in this case will generate a python code and that code will read this data frame and give us an analysis okay so that's what it's going to uh, do now it's going to generate a python code and there is a chance that some code may be dangerous so there is a check that you know to stop that so we have to make sure that uh, you know i want this code to execute and i'm sure that it's not going to be dangerous in this case you can just give this as true but in an ideal situation what happens is like you have to run this in a sandbox kind of an environment that won't affect your system right so i hope this makes sense so let's say that you have a sandbox that is not kind of connected to other things and you are safe to write any codes if there are some dangerous codes it's not going to affect any other resource or something right so that's the sandbox on which you have to run this because it's it's going to generate a python code and, and something can be present there something malicious can also be present present there but for this simple demonstration i'm just like setting this to true but as i said the better way would be to just have let's say a separate uh, container on azure or some cloud servers or you can also create a separate container on which you can run this but for now this is okay as we are going to write some uh, simple queries and so on so that's about it so we have this create pandas data frame agent passing the llm passing the data frame that has the uh, data frame verbose agent type and so on and finally saying that allow dangerous code is equal to true <coughs> i'll run this now we have created an agent so the next step is to send a question to the llm and get a response so i'll say response is equal to pandas df agent and within parameters so sorry pandas data frame agent run and within this you can say you can ask any questions that you want right so based on this data frame so i'll say what are the columns in the data frame and let's run this so we have this verbose is equal to true so we will see the intermediate results and so on Okay, so here we are seeing this. So entering new agent executor change in uh, chain, invoking Python, Ripple, Ast, and so on. And we have this query DF column. So what happens is this question is sent to the model, and uh, the model is giving us the Python code which is DF dot columns. So this code is then executed, and we get the result which is index pregnancies, glucose, blood pressure, and so on. So it says the columns in the data frames are pregnancies, glucose, blood pressure, and so on. So this is how it works. This agent chain works. And if you want to see the result alone, so what you can see is just print this response. Response 
and you will see the responses the columns in the data frames are pregnancies glucose blood pressure and so on so this is how you can ask a question so we can try another question and if you see here we are getting a deprecation warning for this chain dot run so alternatively you can also use invoke but there is a chance that few things may change but we can check that so here i'll probably ask a different question a more a complex question something like uh, you know explain the distribution of the columns in the data frame hmm. so invoke doesn't give us this error so instead of run you can use in uh, invoke okay so this is kind of giving us this distribution and we would see the final result here so i can just print the response so i don't want to see the verbose for now so i'll just say print response okay so this response has input parameters input which is the question that we are sending but we are in interested in this output so rather you can just say response of output so when we used run it directly gave us the results but when using invoke it seems like we have to use this output thing okay yeah so it's kind of a dictionary and we need to get the output value alone so here is the distribution of the columns in the data frame so we have pregnancies this is the mean standard deviation and so on so if you see the previous line it just do this thing the code will be df dot describe which gives us like all this statistical uh, values and so on so based on this you can also understand the distribution uh, that it has and so on whether like it's a you know uh, normal distribution and other kinds of distribution and so on so this is something that you can do and you can also work on asking some other questions and even some other complex question and see if the model is able to uh, give some answers or like it's, it's struggling to give an answer or is there a way you can use uh, multiple data frames for the model to answer a question and so on so those are like some of the variations that you can try and probably in the next video let's build a streamlit interface for that and build a chat interface so instead of just a single question and answer we will have a chatbot kind of a thing where the chat history will be maintained and it will be a conversation kind of a thing so that's something we can try in the next video so i'll just give you a quick recap of whatever we have done here so the first step is installing all the libraries which is langchain langchain experimental in order to access the agent and then we have langchain open AI. so we are importing all the libraries that we need and we have written a function that will automatically understand or determine the file type and load the data to a data frame so that's once that's done the next step would be to read this or basically use this function in order to read a file and after that we have uh, saved this open AI api key to this uh, open AI api key environment variable we are loading the gpt 3.5 turbo using this chat open ai that we have imported from Langchain open AI library so that's the next step so and then we are creating a pandas data frame agent putting in uh, the parameters like llm data frame and so on and finally we can use this run or invoke in order to you know ask a question and get a result so it's better to use this invoke as the run is kind of deprecated and then you can say response of output in order to get the output that you are desiring so you can also use different kind of models and, and see if some model is working better in this case so that's also something that you can do and uh, let's say you don't want to use uh, you know open AI library so instead you can also use uh, Ola mass model or you can also use Gemini model you just have to load the corresponding thing let's say that you want to use Gemini you will install a uh, langchain Google Gen AI kind of a library and from there you can load Gemini and, and if you want to use Olama you can use langchain.llm's Olama and that will be used in order to generate this so probably like in the next video I'll build this streamlit chatbot and in that let's see if we can use a different model like Olamas, uh, Lama 3 or uh, Gamma 2 billion or so on which are like kind of open source models. So this is like uh, that is all for this short video. So I hope this is like useful for you and please try this code and it's like pretty simple. So you can also try like some different uh, combinations or like complex stuff for this particular use case. So that is all from my side and I'll see you in the next upload. Thanks for watching.